Notepad++ is one of those applications that a lot of people really liked and that a lot of people really miss when they switch to Linux. And there have been many t attempts over the years to re-implement that application on Linux, but with a different name or with different features or whatever. And some of those projects have been fairly successful. Notepad QQ is a really good text editor, and I know a lot of people who use it. But that doesn't mean that there aren't more developers out there trying to implement a perfect version of Notepad++ on Linux. And what we're going to be looking at today is another attempt at bringing a Notepad++ experience to the Linux system. The application is called Notepad Next. And it is very early days, so as we go into this, you'll see that there are a lot of features that are missing. And even on their GitHub page, they say that this is a very early project and you shouldn't trust it with large documents or important documents that is prone to some bugs because it's in early development. So just keep that in mind as we go through because it is very light on features in terms of like settings and things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at Notepad Next. So this is what Notepad Next looks like. And if you have ever used Notepad++ or Notepad QQ, you'll see that there are quite a few similarities between those applications and this one. And it is a very well laid out text editor and not one that is going to give you any surprises at all. Along the bottom, you have some status information. Now, this part over here where the folder as workspace stuff is, that's something that is not on by default, but that you can enable if you want. Basically what it does is gives you access to an entire directory full of content so you can switch between them fairly easily. And that is something that a lot of text editors do, so that it's here is very nice. Now, a few things you should know going in. The first one is that it doesn't have support, at least as far as I'm aware, for code suggestions. I'm sure that there is a plan to implement that in the future, but right now, there's nothing here like that. It does, however, if you type in import like this, if it's already in the document, it will give you that suggestion so that you don't have to type the whole thing out. It does the same thing in pretty much every language. It does support quite a few languages, so things like Bash, Python, Haskell, C, all those things are here. As far as comparing it to more mature text editors and their language support, it's quite light, but it does support quite a few languages, which is really good for a fairly new application. It also has macro support, so if you need to set a macro or record a macro that for something that you do over and over again, that is functionality that exists. It also has really good find and replace, so if you need to find something in your document, it can find and replace it through a very extensive search, which is very nice, especially if you're working with a long document. And that's something that Notepad++ also excelled at, so that it's here is, again, very nice. It doesn't do a very good job of being a markdown editor. So when I decided to download this, the first thing I tested was the markdown, because that's going to be something that I am very interested in because that's what I would use it for. And the Markdown stuff is not great. It reminds me of Vim, kind of, to be honest with you. It doesn't change any of the headings or anything like that. It does do bold and italics just fine, but the headers seem to be completely ignored. So if you're interested in using this for Markdown, just know that you're not going to get any of the fancy features that you might get with a dedicated Markdown editor. Now, if what you're looking for is a very simple text editor, we could stop here and you'd probably be fairly fine with this application. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more full featured, when you're starting to look into this application for those features, you might be a little bit disappointed. So the first place where you can kind of see this is in the settings panel. If we go up here to preferences, that's all the settings that there are. There's no more, there's no ability to change the font, the font size, there's no ability to change things like the indentation settings or the, the, the tab settings, things like that. None of that stuff is here. As far as I'm aware, I've searched through the application now for a little while and I haven't seen that stuff. So the settings of the application it leaves quite a bit to be desired. Now remember, it's still very new. So eventually I'm sure they'll implement that stuff, but right now it's not here. 
Uh, one thing that I didn't mention earlier, because I, I just assumed that it was obvious, they do a very good job of syntax highlighting. So if you're using a programming language that it supports, it will do syntax highlighting very well. So that's not something that you have to worry about. Another place that it falls down a little bit is when it comes to documentation. So because this is a very new project, documentation has obviously not been a priority for them yet. Their GitHub page is fairly sparse when it comes to documentation. It tells you how to install it, and that's basically it. It does have a release page where you can kind of see what has changed in the most recent versions, which is nice, but it doesn't have a wiki or anything like that. It's not that big of a deal when it, because it's just a text editor, but it's definitely something that I noticed. And the last thing that I noticed that is kind of lacking is that it doesn't follow either GTK or Qt themings. It's a Qt application, so you'd expect it to follow the Qt application theming that you have set on your system. I have a dark theme set. It doesn't follow it. So I'm not sure why it doesn't follow it. It should, but it doesn't. So maybe that's something to do with my machine. My machine tends to be very finicky when it comes to Qt apps because I'm using Window Manager and for some reason sometimes applications just don't follow the theme. So that's possible, but it's still something that I noticed. Because of course I noticed something to do with theming. That's kind of my, you know, shtick. Anyways, the application itself is fairly usable. I can't say that I've seen anything that I would qualify as a bug, more just missing features. And it's definitely one of those things that it is very early days on in terms of stuff that would be very beneficial for people who are going to use this for programming. If you're going to use this for in-depth programming, you're probably not going to be very happy with it yet, just because there are some things that are just missing, right? And there are more fully featured options out there when it comes to that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for a fully fledged IDE, uh, this is not going to be it, at least not yet. So that is Notepad Next. I always like the fact that developers take time out of their day to create applications that are replacing ones that were popular on Windows, simply because the more alternatives we have to popular Windows applications, the better, in my opinion. So the fact that Net Notepad Next exists is a good thing and I hope that they continue development on it. They have done a really good job of that. If you look at their commit history, they do a lot of commits. So this is an application that is quickly improving. So if you are interested in checking this out, the link will be in the video description. If you have comments on Notepad Next or anything like that, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear from you. If you want to, you can follow me on Twitter at the Linuxcast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description as well, along with all my other social media networks stuff. There's just a ton of links down there. So if you want to go splunking through some social media stuff that I put out, head on down there. So you can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. I have added several new tiers to the plans there on Patreon, and if you support me on Patreon in an annual plan, you get 10% off as well. So thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all fantastic, and this channel would not be what it is without you. So thank you so very, very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.